The books that I've written about Europe or about the idea of governing the world have been, to a certain extent, books that were written, let's say, at 30,000 feet. But if you really want new ideas to emerge, in my own experience, they come from staying close to the ground. The richness of history lies in the uh, unpredictability of real facts. So those unpredictable stories are what generate the abstract ideas for me. In my case, it was Greece, and it will always be Greece because it's a cumulative process. Actually, the story begins in geologic time with the last rising of the Mediterranean and the creation of the modern Greek geography of islands and pitted coastline and scarce arable land that somehow attracts settlement. And life is not easy in this relatively dry terrain and a very specific ecology emerges around olives and figs and shepherding that in some quite extraordinary way generates urban life rather early on. And not just one city or two cities. A huge number of cities in a relatively small area all communicating with one another developing this extraordinary cultural, philosophical production that we know, not developing into a great imperial system, but rather being taken over and becoming the plaything of imperial systems over centuries. The penultimate of these great imperial systems is the Ottoman, in which actually they flourish to the point where they can establish uh, contact with the new technologies of technologies of print and the new ideas that are emerging in Western Europe. Amongst those new ideas is the idea of nationalism and a level of organization and conspiratorial organization that after several unsuccessful attempts, allows them against all the odds to rise up and find that they now have a very modern task on their hands, which is to construct a state, which none of them have any experience of. And the story of the last 200 years is the story of what that state becomes, how it shapes the people within it, and what its vision of itself is. And because of this very long history, that vision of itself must necessarily include, in a very deep way, a vision of the past of the Greeks. And of course, that's where Mr. Gennadios comes in. And the library, as the expression of Gennadios's interest, as a very self-confident member of something quite new, which was this new bourgeois elite that held the future of the country in its hands. He was thinking with history. He wanted his country to think with history. And the library is a machine for thinking with history. From the first moments of independence, there is this question of what the relationship is between the state with its clearly defined boundaries and Hellenism, because Hellenism is operating on a much more far-flung plane, and there are Greeks all over the Balkans, and there are Greeks in Anatolia, there are Greeks in the Middle East. And they have no difficulty understanding Turkish, understanding Albanian, 
Gennadios was very early to understand that the archives of this part of the world are multilingual. You need to look at what the Venetians mapped out across the Peloponnese, the whole overlapping Venetian imperium that was much of the Greek world. And on the other hand, you have this wonderful literature of the travelers' accounts brought to Greece, often by Philhellenism, which is a very important cultural document of the 19th century, because it shows just how large the Greeks loomed in the European imagination. The fact that Greek was the language of the church and therefore the language of literacy for hundreds of years immediately opens up realms that are not available to you if you are interested in the history of Albania. And the archives of Ali Pasha, which we can now read, are full of surprises as well. Just the sheer extent of the Greek involvement in his entourage, in his court. But the strange culture of Yanina that I think we don't fully understand yet, that was this striking fusion of Greek and Albanian and Turkish. And I think it's astonishingly recently that the study of Greek history has caught up with the Gennadios, because this was always the premise of the Gennadios library, as it had been of Gennadios himself that all of this, as far as he was concerned, and he was totally right about this, was part of the history of Greece. That was how the Greeks should think about their own past. And the Gennadios is a machine to do that with. <laughs>